Welcome. Power BI just released a new feature that took something that used to be complicated and made it very easy. This, creating Pareto charts. You can now do this in a couple of clicks. I'm going to show you how to do it. Then I'm going to show you how to elevate it, taking a standard looking visual like this and formatting it beyond to make it stand out like this. Let's talk about what Pareto charts are. It's the 80-20 rule. There's a hypothesis that 20% of the population typically accounts for 80% of the yield. So to report that against anything, Microsoft now has enabled us to just click a few buttons and create this Pareto line. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Take one second, hit subscribe, like, leave a comment, ask a question. I will respond and we'll get this thing going. So let's rock and roll. Let's go to Power BI. All right, so here we are in Power BI. You can download this file in the description. There's a link you can follow along connecting to the same data. This is gonna be a data model that uh, takes customer sales transactions and we report on the sold number. So very simple, lots of different dimensions to use. But the way this file is laid out is we'll talk about again what the Pareto is. We'll do a very easy creation of one through a lab and then we'll show you how to elevate it creating this truly distinctive separation point of, of the reporting aspect of it all. Uh, we're gonna fly through this thing, it's so simple. Follow along, let's go. So again, the Pareto principle is basically saying the vital few versus the trivial many, typically 80%. So 20% of the population or whatever percentage of the population yields 80% of the value. So what that does is it takes the aggregate amount of each bar each thing you're counting against the percentage of the total and then aggregates that in a linear fashion uh, that might sound like a lot of words but let's just look at it. it's easier to kind of see so if here are the sales of any given you know dimension well when you add those up to each other the 80 percent rule is about here so we'd want to see that this right here team skype everything on this side is the most accountable or valuable aspect of it so how do you create this Pareto line this is what you do now. Super simple. Used to be a ton of DAX calculations, very complex. Now it's a few clicks. Lab one. So let's just make a chart. I'm going to take any dimension. I'm going to use product in this case and the sold dimension. And it's all done through visual calculations. Let's make this line stacked column chart. Come down here. And now how do we create this? Boom. Check this out. New visual calculation custom. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the can version of percent of grand total. And this is a visual calculation. I have another video uh, you can check out in the description. I'll put a link to it here where it goes deep into how to leverage all of these uh, visual calculations. But for this aspect of it, I will just uh, do it for you. So I typed in the percentage of grand total by putting in the sold and modifying the principles as you saw. If you're ever curious, you can click this thing and see what you did. Uh, it's mixed. Soup makes it very easy, it takes, the, it takes the complexity all the way out of it. And here's the new feature. So what we wanna do is add up the percentage of the grand total, you know, of the whole holistic total, this is 2%. But we wanna add that percentage up in order of the amount of this sold value. Here's where the new special sauce is, no more complicated decks. Just go to, uh, we're gonna to go to, the running sum and we're going to do the same thing now we're going to sum up the percentage of grand total but just comma order it by the sold descending close that boom and now we have ourselves a easy pareto line and i'll even call it just for the sake of it boom move it over here line axis and we have just created it. We'll hide this. We don't care about this other one. So if we go back to the visual now, we've created this line. And so again, here, this is the basic formatting stuff. And I'm gonna next show you how to elevate the formatting of this. But first, let's just look at what this is. So to make this look like the top, we'll take the title off, we'll take the legend away. And uh, now we have the uh, simple shading. So I'll turn the shade area on. We can turn the markers on. And again, we're gonna show you how to get way more complex with this when you wanna elevate it, but we'll turn the markers on and we'll turn the data labels on, but we will only, uh, you know, we'll keep them on that row there. 
bingo. So if we wanted to change the color, we could do that. We've created the Pareto. We can see where it is. We can format it now as well. This is key on the properties pane, the data format, apply the settings to this easy Pareto value, decimal number, percentage. Uh, we'll go to zero decimal places. And look at that. Now we have created it. We are set and it is rocking and rolling. So next step is how do we take and elevate it to this. Again, that's the Pareto, you've just done it. So now, if you wanna see how to make it look better, I will show you that. Because what we need sometimes are visual cues in a uh, in an image, in a chart, to help the, the viewer understand what we're looking at. So what we have here, I'm gonna show you all the ways you can trigger it. You can then decide what to use for yourself. So here's the exact same chart, but what I wanted to do is call out, here's how you can see on the bars, the side of the population that accounts for the 80% by looking at this in green, the other side that accounts for it versus red, and then the data labels, you can see the markers change, you can see the data label values change, and you can see the shade area changes. And let me tell you, it's not straightforward how to do this. This is where it takes some finessing and how to kind of stack and think a little bit outside the box to create this, especially the multi-shaded line. So. Now you wanna elevate this visual. You know how to create a Pareto now, super simple. Let me show you how to elevate it. So what we'll do is we'll just go back to this lab. We'll take this first one, just for the sake of it. Here's our second lab. We'll, we wanna make the same thing. So we'll go through the different steps. All right, so what we're gonna do is we wanna first, let's just start with the bars. And I picked a couple of different greens. I wonder if I still have those available. So I'll click this column and I'll choose this green just to make it look exactly the same. And you can see it's gonna be a uh, formatting rule. So we can just format first the value of the bars based upon the easy Pareto value. And what we're gonna do for that, again, this is the column formatting. We'll come to the column, hit FX. We'll do a rule. We'll base it on the easy Pareto and uh, we are going to set this up to be a new rule value. If it's greater than, we can actually say zero if we want to. Zero percent, zero number, less than 0.8. Now we're putting in the brackets of what's applicable for this. And so what we're saying is if it's greater than 80%, uh, we want that to be red. and if it's less than green, and just like that. So again, FX, because it's referencing this easy Pareto, they made it visual calculations are now part of the, the visual itself, which is great. So again, you can format the bars. And my goal is to show you all the different ways to format these things, starting simple to hard, so you can just be equipped. Use what you wanna use, it's your, you know, your call, do whatever you want. So let's continue now. So it gets a little bit trickier, now, how about the, uh, let's go with the line. How do we make the multi-shaded area? This is where you have to think a little bit outside the box. So what we're gonna do is for this line, we're going to go to the line, we're going to show it to off. So we have that shaded there. Okay, cool. We're gonna go to the markers, turn those off as well. All right, now how do we get it? Because if you go to the line, You'll notice what's tricky about this is you don't have the option to change the color of the line dynamically. If you go to lines, you just have a line and a color. So it's stuck on blue, what's up man? How do I make it different colors? You make multiple lines over top of each other. So what we're gonna do now is go back to the uh, visual calculations. We're gonna say, uh, we'll call this green line. And we'll say this equals if the easy Pareto is less than or equal to 0.8, then put the value, otherwise put blank. Okay, so it does this. It looks a little confusing initially, but what we're gonna do then is we're going to take this green line, put it down here on the lines, and you'll see we're starting now to get some actual differences because what we just did was we said if the value is part of this first segment then show the line if it's not don't show the line 
Let's do another one. We're going to say uh, redline. Redline equals the exact same thing if the value, but we're in this time we're going to say is greater than 0.8 or 80%. Uh, then show the value. Otherwise, uh, put blank. And now we have the red line. So let's take this red line that's now over here, put it on the spot as well. And what do you see? Well, now we can see that we actually have some shaded areas. So let's go back to the report and let's configure this a little bit. So now for the line, the series, we can actually choose the green line and we're going to set this green line. Let me do this here. Show the series on lines. Let's just set all this stuff back for a second. Cool. So now we're going to go to first, let's clean up the data labels because you'll see there's lots of data labels. We don't need all those on there. We want to keep the data labels uh, for like so. So we'll keep, we'll turn them off for the red line and the green line. But now these lines. We're going to turn them on. You have to turn them on just to set the color first and let's get that same green. So I'll go back to uh, my columns, which were here. Choose this more colors, copy this guy. Again, this formatting is detailed, but what you're going to see is how to kind of get through this process and do it. So when we go back to the lines, you can pick your green line, choose the color, set it to this and you actually have to trick it a bit because you have to turn it on to change the color. And I just didn't like how that line looks there. So you have to turn it on, set the color, turn it off. And now you've adjusted it. Same with the red line. So we're going to go to the red line. We're going to turn it on, set the color to red. It changes, turn it off. Now we have the shaded. It's this trick. You got to turn things on, turn it off. Cool. And so this, the reason why I like this shading here as well is this shows the segmentation, this, this just really helps call out like this is where it changes between these two values. Uh, so now you've created a multiple line uh, shading situation that looks great. If you want to turn the light on, you can turn it on. I didn't like it on. Choose whatever colors you like, but I'm showing you the different ways to do this thing. Uh, also, when you have data labels now, let's turn the labels on for the bottom. Uh, and that's, you know, it just can be helpful because maybe we can remove the axis of some things. So. For example, I'll come to the, I'll change this version up a little bit, just looking at it. I'll turn the values off for this axis to give us more space. And uh, in doing so, I'll turn the data labels on for the sold amount and we'll position them at the inside base. And we'll take this value, we'll make it white and turn it lower. We'll turn them on. And there we go. We also will show more if we turn the background off and there you go. So now we can see these values here again, when they're it's tiny, it just doesn't fit. So if you wanted to, you know, your choice, you could move this to say, we want the layout to be uh, auto. It just might kind of put it everywhere. I don't like it as much. I like it inside base again, controlling the formatting as you see fit, giving you options. Uh, now, finally, when we want to adjust the, uh, well, there's two steps. Then there's the markers and also the labels themselves. So let's look at the markers. <clears throat> if we, again, if we go to the markers, now that we have two lines, we can adjust the lines independently of each other. So we're going to go to the marker section. I'm going to pick the green line. I'm going to show the marker for this and you can customize it. Pick what you like. I went big just for the sake of demoing and showing how it can be different. I'm going to change this to a black border. You can change the thickness uh, and get kind of chunks there. Again, I'm showing you options. You can pick whatever you like. And now as that's going, uh, we have that set up. How about we can pick the red line and with the red line, I will take this and I'll turn the marker on as well. And we'll say show for this series. We'll have that maybe a smaller red dot. The color is still red but let's turn the border on too. And you can set that up again, however you like. It's the idea of you customizing it. I'm showing you the different ways to customize it based on your taste. But this is now saying, well, look at this. 
uh, you know, kind of bigger, smaller subliminal messaging with all that. Finally, the data labels themselves. So for the data labels, you all, we do have the ability with the data labels to do a conditional property. So first let's make them uh, a little bit smaller just for the sake of it. We'll turn the background on. Oops, I'm on the wrong one. We want to set this up for the easy Pareto. I'm gonna make this smaller. Let's turn the background uh, on. And again, I'll position them. Uh, maybe how about everything above? You can choose what you like, choose what you like, but the goal is just to show you. Uh, so with this, again, we are unable to change the data label color, but let's get actually a little bit more creative here. I'm just gonna think outside the box while I'm looking at this, because what we can do is actually take this up a notch and you can put the green line, say put the green line, put the data labels on, and we can get really wild where we can say the value is actually calculations. We'll, we'll, we won't mess with that. We'll keep it going where we were going. I was going to get a little crazy and start to change up the actual uh, values themselves, the backgrounds, but it's just not needed. So what we can do is if we go to, you know, you gotta think outside the box sometimes, you gotta try to roll with things, challenge yourself. That's the whole point of having fun with this stuff. So I'm gonna come up to this easy Pareto now, I'm gonna go back to this value. I turn the data labels off, I'm gonna turn them back on. I'm clicking all over the place here. Data labels on. And what we can do is for the color, we'll set that same property and we'll do a rule where if the easy Pareto value is greater than or equal to zero and less than 0.8, then let's put that, and again, the green, I'm just gonna pick any kind of green for now. You can choose it as you want. Number, new rule, we'll say the same thing now if it's greater than 0.8, number, and one, maybe make it red. And you can start to tweak this out, play with it as you see fit. Again, I wanna maybe change this a little bit up because this doesn't look quite like I like it. So maybe do lighter and you got it. So you, these are the subliminal ways now where you can get a really nicely formatted chart. Pareto, super simple, no DAX. Uh, it's very easy, visual calculations and development. So again, subscribe, like, leave a question or a comment. Uh, I will respond. Hopefully this helps increase your Power BI skills and enjoy. See ya.